welcome to your Friday One Show with me, Alex Jones, and he's back. It's the one and only Harry Judd. Hey. Nice. Good to see you, Harry, as always. Thanks for having me back. And I have to say congratulations, because McFly, you're number two, aren't you, in the album chat? Yes, number uh, two. Amazing. Yeah. ACDC just, just... I know. I didn't mm. want to mention them, Al. I didn't want to give them a plug, but you just did. Um, yeah. But Sorry about look, that. At least after... they're massive, though, aren't they? They are. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think for us, after 10 years, to have a number two record is, is great. It's We're phenomenal. It's brilliant. We're very, very happy. And we are pleased that you're here tonight. Well, I'm very pleased you asked me back, Alex. Because <laughs> I know you personally did. <laughs> you know, it's all, yeah. Uh, well, tonight, with the help of some famous faces, we'll be surprising nine talented youngsters with the news that they've become finalists in our playwriting competition, As You Write It. And the reactions, they are lovely, aren't they? They are, they are. Now, though, let's meet tonight's guests, who all share a love of music, but of two very different kinds. Joining us from her home in L.A. is a pop star and singer-songwriter who became world famous when a huge hit, All About That Bass, went to number one in 78 countries. Puts my number two to shame, that. Um, but also here in the studio, after their extremely moving performance on Strictly a couple of weeks ago, two classical musicians who are members of what's been described as Britain's most talented family. They are that indeed. Please welcome Sheku and Brian McCanny Mason and Megan Trainer. <laughs> Evening all. What a gang of guests. This is perfect for a Friday night. Um, hello, Megan, as well. Obviously, it's not Friday night where you are in LA. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, and yeah. hi, guys. Now, one thing we know, you're from very different musical backgrounds. But what brings you all together is, he's on your T-shirt, Sheku, is Bob Marley. <laughs> so for the Canet Masons then, this is a family thing, isn't it? You, you all love Bob Marley. Yeah, we grew up with his voice and his songs because our parents are both massive fans of his music. And I was always very, very inspired by the um, motivation by, by um, the motivation behind why he shares music with the world. Oh, and and Megan, we know your passion for reggae is inspired by your family too. Yes, I have an uncle from Trinidad and Tobago and he was um, a soca star over there. So I grew up from the age of seven. I was listening to soca and calypso and obviously reggae. So uh, a lot of people don't know, but all about that bass, like in my head, is kind of like soca with the mama, she told me, don't worry about. Like if people knew that that was all soca inspired. <laughs> ah, see, now that I hear that, yes. I completely get it. Um, and you guys are going to do a special performance of the Redemption song, Bob Marley's song, at the end of the show. It's really special, so thanks for recording that for us. And two of Sheku and Brimer's uh, sisters are also going to join us in a bit to talk about the family's brand new album, and we'll be finding out why Megan's, as you can see, got a Christmas decorations up early. And it's not today. They've been there for a while, haven't they? Too early, in my opinion. But first, let's Grinch. catch up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's catch up on all the big events that have taken place this week, according to our favourite street in Leeds, that is. Well, that's what they've been talking about this week. But as always, we want to hear from you too. So please do send your thoughts about anything we're talking about tonight. Now, we heard them talking about this year's I'm a Celebrity. And, of course, we've got to mention that your bandmate Tom's wife, Giovanna, is in the castle. She seems to be doing really well, to be fair. But I can't stop thinking about Tom. Because he's the one at home with three really young children. Three boys, six, four and two. Uh, I saw him today and he was like, honestly, it's like she's having a holiday. And he, he's... <laughs> yeah, honestly, he, he said he stood in his kitchen the other day with three boys shouting, I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. Because, like, you can imagine, three oh, boys... Six... I can imagine. Yeah. And he's been tweeting a bit, and one tweet yeah. really sums it up, Yeah, there it? we go. Last night, one of my kids lost a tooth, one went to bed, and the other had night terrors. What a night. Running on zero sleep, thanks to these little monsters. Oh, so... bless him. It's, it's no joke, is it? It's Pretty hard going. Intense. But Giovanna's doing really well. Yes, and he's voting for her every night to do the bush trucker trials, which I think is a Bush bit... trials. Yeah, he's putting his wants his wife to go through it. I don't think he wants you to say that on the one show. No, I just did, just though, did. so... Anyway, uh, it's a big day for us here today because it's time now to start revealing the finalists in our competition As You Write It, Your Play on Stage, which we launched earlier this year, along with the Shakespeare North Playhouse. We asked children and young people aged between 7 and 16 to send in an idea for a play and you didn't disappoint. And not at all. Thanks so much to everybody who entered. We had loads of entries across the three age categories with an incredible range of ideas. It tons and tons of them. pretty impressive. Yeah. 
Uh, but, of course, only three in each category can go through to the next stage, where they'll write their full play with the help of professionals. So one winner in each age group will then be chosen to have their play performed at the brand new Shakespeare North Playhouse in Prescott on Merseyside when it opens in 2022. And as you can see, it's coming along. It's going to be a, a good one. They have. So let's get started with the three finalists in our first age category. Oh, my little faces. Um, thank you so much to the cast of Aladdin for helping us as well with those surprises. And they'll be performing the full panto at the Globe Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Cross fingers. From the 3rd of December. Right, let's catch up with Megan Trainer now. So, yes. Megan, uh, a huge part of the British Christmas tradition <laughs> is the panto. But what we wanted to know is, are you guys familiar with the panto in the US? Panto? Panto, yeah. Panto. I, I think the answer is no. no. <laughs> okay, it's the pantomime. Al, why don't you try and explain um, what the okay. pantomime so is? Okay, so normally um, a panto, Megan, pantomime is based on classic fairy tales. So maybe it'll be Cinderella or Puss in Boots. Sometimes the men dress as women, the women dress as men. It's all about audience interaction and a bit of comedy. The Canny Masons love it. <laughs> they go every year to Cardiff. That's in Wales. Um, it's, it's an odd concept, but honestly, it works. And children and actually adults love it. So next time you're over at Christmas time, I'm going to take you to a panto. Please do. Don't let me down. This sounds so fun. You guys are way cooler than us. <laughs> I, th I think that's polite. She looks very, confused. Yeah, very <laughs> polite. Um, really but we know you, obviously, you love Christmas, as we can see your decorations in the background. But we heard that you've had them up since Halloween. We were thinking that's possibly a bit too early, Megan. Every year I always start decorating the day after Halloween. This time was different because we were recording the album, like, in July and August. So we've we've been celebrating like it feels like forever all year for Christmas, but it doesn't let you down. Like it's it's always a good time. Oh, there's my brother as the Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it is it is the season or tis the season, I should say, for Christmas albums. And um, earlier this week, Megan, we had Dolly Parton on talking about hers, and she had the Christmas trees as well. She told us about a Dolly Parton Christmas. So what makes a very trainer Christmas? Oh, mine is called A Very Trainer Christmas because my family did this entire album with me at my house. Even that photo was taken in my kitchen. We piled up a bunch of <laughs> boxes and presents and my brother took the picture. Um, and my brothers produced the songs with me and wrote the originals with me. And um, I just felt like they did so much for me because we were all quarantined together. We we're all trapped together. That I was like, this has to be our album and we should do all the promo together. And that's why my brother would dress up like the Grinch for me. And so it was like our family Christmas. And when you buy the album, there's a picture on the back of the entire family around the Christmas tree. And we're all cute. That's, do you have uh, trainer family Christmas traditions then that you stick to each year or? We, we don't do anything crazy. That's like the, mo the com most common question I've been getting. But we always dress up. Like my brother is Santa. I'm always an elf. Um, and this year, my husband really wants to be Santa. And next year, when I have my baby boy, I want him to be a reindeer. So it's like Halloween for us, but on Christmas. <laughs> oh, and congratulations, by the way, as well, on the baby boy that's due in January, we hear. So you'll have a new member. And he's already, baby... kind, of, he's already kind of been in the video already, hasn't he? Yeah, he did a music video with the legendary Earth, Wind & Fire. So he's really cool already. Um, <laughs> and all day it was crazy we were five and a half months pregnant and we had a music video with earth wind fire and that should be coming out very soon well we've got a clip of the uh, lyric video this is uh, the new song holidays Definitely. Uh, and it was the final of The Voice as well last weekend. Um, obviously, it's sad that you're not going to be there for the next series, but of course, you're going to be being a mummy at home. Uh, will you miss it, do you think? Oh, my God, so much. Yeah, even when I was recording um, the last two episodes, I think, we were in L.A., and it was so hard because I just wanted to hug everyone, and we were trying to make cool ways of me being like, high five, and I'm on the, like, the pad that they had, like a tablet. Um, but I missed everyone and it wasn't the same and I 
I get sad, but I know that Anne Marie is going to be a superstar and like have the best time on the show. So I'm glad that she's stepping in for me. But yeah, it's just too dangerous and scary with the baby coming out in yeah. February to fly back. And it was a lot. Well, never mind. You'll be back in the UK soon. We're going to take you to a panther. You're going to have the night of your life, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Megan. Uh, Megan's new album, A Very Trainer Christmas, is out now. It is. Still to come, we find out how Sheku, Brimer and their five other siblings manage not to drive each other crazy, all living together and practising their instruments during lockdown. But first, let's go back to our As You Write It competition because it's time to reveal the finalists in our 11 to 13 age group. Yes, now this time I got to be the secret squirrel that surprised them with the news using their very own play ideas. But before we get to the surprises, let's hear what competition judge playwright Natasha Gordon thought of our fabulous finalists. Oh, the reactions are so nice, aren't they? I get a bit tearful watching that. It's I know, so I can lovely. see you close up. Oh, you're so emotional, <laughs> Harry. <laughs> uh, thanks as well to Michael Ball, of course, for helping us out with the last one. She was absolutely over the moon. Now, joining their brothers to talk about their album that they recorded together as a family are Isita and Konya Kane Mason. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello, ladies. Hey. Um, Ista, this is the first album that you guys have recorded together. It's called Carnival, uh, and it's based on a famous piece of music. <laughs> Why this piece of music? So we really wanted to make an album that was aimed at children because we all grew up with an album called Peter and the Wolf by Prokofiev, and it has music interspersed with a story. And that really stuck out to us as children and really helped us to kind of understand the music and get into the music. So we really wanted to do something similar and Carnival of the Animals was the perfect piece to choose because each piece is based on an animal. There's a swan, there's an elephant, there's, there's a cuckoo, there's a whole range. And it's very visual music and very appealing to children and adults alike. So it's been the natural choice for us. And also it's for an ensemble of lots of people so we could all get involved and all, all play. So, Konya, you guys supply the music. <laughs> um, I can hear myself back. What's going on? Like an echo. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you collaborated with Michael Morpurgo um, so that you can incorporate these poems as well um, in between the tracks. And you've got him and Olivia Coleman then reading them, haven't you? Tell us about the collaboration then with him and how it came about. I think so, what was so wonderful is when we first approached, first of all, I'd just like to say, um, growing up, I was a huge fan of Michael Morpurgo. I'd read his books all the time. So I was thrilled that he even considered to um, work with us on the album. It was such a kind of privilege. Um, and when we first approached him with the idea of him perhaps writing poems for, to, to kind of fit the music in Carnival of the Animals, um, he, he responded with the poems. So he, he, he answered, he sent an email with all the poems ready written within a week. And it was just so wonderful to read and it was kind of like the music itself is a narrative and the title adds another dimension. And then these poems just then took um, the music to another level and gave it kind of um, a whole other perspective. And so many of the poems were, they were so beautiful, some quite sad. Um, and I think it just kind of brings the whole, the whole music to life, really. That, honestly, it sounds amazing. Now, Sheku, obviously, you have recorded lots of your own albums before and collaborated with other artists, most recently for Children in Need. Um, but what's what I really want to know is what it's been like recording an album with your family, with your brothers and sisters. Yeah, it was, um, it was wonderful to be able to record with my brothers and sisters. We grew up, of course, playing a lot together. Um, but to, to record together was, was a really special experience. And for my younger siblings, it was their first time making a recording. And to do that in Abbey Road, I think, was very exciting um, for them, as it was for, for, for Bremer and I as well. Um, and, and so, yeah, we're very excited to share that with, yeah. with, with everyone. I mean, you are a ridiculously talented family and the music you produce is magical. But tell me, Brimer, <laughs> right, during lockdown, you're all in the same house. So many instruments going on. Were your mum and dad sitting in the lounge with earmuffs on? I mean, it must have been <laughs> so loud. And I mean, where, how did you find space to go off and practise on your own? It was very cramped and it was very loud, but our parents, um, loved having us back. Um, I'm they, sure they, they did. They, and they were really, really sad when we had to go back to London again. But we just tried to keep ourselves busy doing Facebook Lives and trying to connect um, virtually. Um, 
we also most recently did um, a concert to um, a live audience um, f for the first time in, in London in, in the Barbican, which of course um, virtually is, is really, really exciting, but nothing will ever oh. replace um, live music. But that virtual concert is going back online for the, for the second lockdown, but lockdown was extremely cramped. I'm sure, and your parents <laughs> very, very must very miss loud. the noise, I'm sure. <laughs> well, the album sounds brilliant. It's called Carnival and it's out now, isn't it? It is indeed. And we've got that exclusive performance of Redemption Song coming up very soon. First children's author and fellow As You Write a Judge, Frank Cottrell Boyce, had the pleasure of surprising the three finalists in our oldest category with the good news. So there you have it. Congratulations to all our finalists and we're going to be getting to know them a lot better over the next few months as we follow the process of them writing their final plays. On that note, Vixter says, seeing those young kids passionate about creating theatre on the one show is just lovely to see. Thank you for your messages. We've got loads, but as always, we've run out of time. A big thank you to all our guests tonight and of course to you, Harry. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be back on Monday with Ronan Keaton and Matthew McConaughey. Nice. Casual. Now though, <laughs> It's time to sit back and enjoy the Canet Mason's stunning version of Bob Marley's Redemption Song. Have a lovely weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye. <laughs>